Welcome to Field Lab Earth, the podcast that's all about past and present advances in the fields of agronomic, crop, soil, and environmental sciences. Today, we'll be talking to Dr. Rogerio Serrat about intercropping coffee and macadamia nuts. Macadamia nuts are a lucrative crop for Brazilian farmers, but long wait times from planting to production can cause financial strain when first planting them. This episode, Rogerio discusses his work researching intercropping coffee and macadamia nuts, which can help ease financial stress and lead to higher economic efficiency for both crops later on. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but before we dive in, we want to thank our sponsors, starting with Meter Group. Meter specializes in robust soil moisture sensing, innovative weather monitoring, cloud data logging, advanced data visualization software, and more. Their well-published scientific instrumentation is used worldwide in universities, research and testing labs, government agencies, agriculture, and industrial applications. Listen to their new podcast, We Measure the World, to hear how innovative researchers leverage environmental data to make our world a better and more sustainable place at metergroup.com slash fieldlabearth. Our second sponsor is Gazman Technologies, the maker of the GT5000 Terra, the smallest portable FTIR multi-gas analyzer for greenhouse gas and environmental research. Measure carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, methane, nitrous oxide, nitric oxide, nitrogen dioxide, ammonia, and water vapor in real time simultaneously from static or automated chambers. Visit www.gasmet.com, that's gasmet spelled G-A-S-M-E-T, or email sales at gasmet.com for more information. I'm your host, Abby Morrison. Let's talk about science. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. Today, we have Rogerio Serrat with us. Rogerio grew up on a small farm in the northwest part of Sao Paulo State, southeastern Brazil. His parents were coffee growers. He is an agronomist with a master and doctorate degrees in production systems and crop science. He's 44 years old and is an associate professor at the Department of Crop Science, Sao Paulo State University, Botucatu Campus. Coffee crop management and coffee macadamia intercropping have been some of his research focuses in partnership with other researchers from the Sao Paulo Agency of Agribusiness Technology. Hi, Rogerio. How are you doing today? I am good, and you? I am doing great as well. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Today, we are talking about coffee and macadamia production in Brazil. So to get us started, Rogerio, can you tell us about coffee and macadamia in Brazil why they're important crops and the role they serve in Brazil? Yes, Abby. Uh, Brazil is the biggest producer of coffee in the world. Currently, the, the coffee production in Brazil represents uh, about 30-33% the 30, of the coffee production in the world. So, Brazil has today about uh, 2 million hectares of coffee plantations. So coffee is a really important crop in Brazil, okay? Since uh, two centuries ago. Macadamia is a relatively new crop in Brazil. Uh, in the last three decades, there is an increasing uh, in the macadamia cultivation, but uh, Brazil uh, has today about uh, 6,000 hectares of macadamia plantations. So your work focuses a lot on intercropping macadamia and coffee, and specifically in this paper, you were talking about transitioning a little bit from maybe one to the other. So can you please tell me some of the barriers to starting macadamia farming, uh, some of the difficulties with a declining coffee field, and how intercropping can help that situation? Yes, uh... The, the regions where coffee are 
cultivated is the same regions where uh, macadamia uh, can be cultivated. Okay, the weather and the soil are the same in the periods when the price of coffee are low many farmers uh, become interested to plant macadamia orchards. The biggest barrier to macadamia cultivation uh, or expansion is that the implantation costs uh, and the period in which the farmer stays without income is, is big, about uh, five or six years. So this is the main barrier uh, to expansion of the macadamia uh, cultivation in Brazil. We had another experiment uh, intercropping coffee uh, and macadamia since the beginning of both crops. But in this work, we try to introduce macadamia plants intercropped in a old cough plantation, okay? Because uh, the old cough plantations in Brazil normally have less plants per hectare, a, a less dense uh, population. Old plants uh, normally has a little production. And this plantation, this old cough plantation, are not competitive to the new cough plantations because in new cough plantations uh, have uh, more plants per hectare, uh, uh, different plant arrangements, uh, use new technology, are adapted to mechanical harvest, uh, and it is difficult to these old cough plantations to be uh, economically efficient, okay? So put uh, macadamia intercropped with this old cough plantation uh, could help farmers to make these areas economically more efficient, okay? And even, even being little, the cough production in this area can help farmers pay the macadamia implantation, the beginning of the macadamia growth. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you were working on transitioning these fields to a new crop, helping them sustain those costs as they start to branch into macadamia farming. And a lot of what you were playing with here was the different pruning methods for the coffee plants as those macadamia plants are coming up, um, maybe some of how they're arranged. Can you talk to us about how, what your hypothesis was and the methods you used to test it? Okay, uh, Abby, maybe maybe first I can explain what is their crop, okay? Yes, please. <laughs> okay, just just to explain a little bit about intercropping. Intercropping is, is the, the process where we put two crops, two different species in the same area uh, at the same time. It is common uh, in row crops like uh, beans, uh, corn, uh, soybeans. Uh, you can put it together these two crops in the same area. Uh, in, in perennial crops like if some fruits or coffee is is really popular. Uh, farmers uh, plant, uh, for example, beans. Uh, intercrop uh, between the rows of crop uh, plantations. Uh, 
in some countries is really popular uh, farms cultivate uh, uh, shedded uh, coffee okay they put some trees into the coffee plantation to these trees make a shadow or shed in the coffee plants because coffee plants are originated in a shaded environment okay so um, in this case when try to make a transition from an old cough crop to a cough macadamia intercropping system we have some hypotheses the first hypothesis is that this uh, modality of transition could be economically more interesting to the farm because the cough production could pay macadamia setup, okay? Uh, but we didn't know if it could be possible plant macadamia into the cough plantation without remove some cough plants, okay? So we tested uh, different prunings and removing cough plants, okay? So in some treatments, we, we made uh, just a side pruning, like we prune uh, side branches of cough plants cl uh, close to the macadamia plant. In another treatment, we stamping two cough plants. Stamping is you cut the main stem of the cot plant just above the soil so you remove all above ground part of the, the cough plant uh, and we plant a macadamia seedling between these two pruned uh, cough plants or we remove one cough plant to put a macadamia seedling in, in its place uh, or we plant macadamia between two unplanted uh, cough plants, okay? We also uh, uh, kept a, a monocrop cough plot and we planted a monocrop macadamia plot to, to compare. <music> Hi everyone, I hope you're enjoying the show. Interested in learning more? Rogerio's article, Macadamia Intercropping into an Inefficient Adult Coffee Plantation is Economically Advantageous, published in Agronomy Journal, will be free to read for the next two weeks. If you're a certified crop advisor or certified professional soil scientist, you can take a quiz for continuing education units for this episode, which can be found in our show notes or on certifiedcropadvisor.org. Thanks again also to our sponsors, Gazmet Technologies and Meter Group. For Gazmet Technologies, conduct greenhouse gas flux measurements in the field using the GT5000 Terra. Weighing 20.7 pounds, splash-proof IP54 rated, internal pump and battery, and vibration resistant, the GT5000 Terra is a robust and portable multi-gas analyzer for field work. Visit www.gasmet.com or email sales at gasmet.com for more information. Meter specializes in robust soil moisture sensing, innovative weather monitoring, cloud data logging, advanced data visualization software, and more. Their well-published scientific instrumentation is used worldwide in universities, research and testing labs, government agencies, agriculture, and industrial applications. Listen to their new podcast, We Measure the World, to hear how innovative researchers leverage environmental data to make our world a better and more sustainable place at metergroup.com slash fieldlabearth. Thank you for being our sponsor. Let's get back to the yeah. show. So you had coffee monocropped, macadamia monocropped, uh, macadamia between some pruned 
coffee plants, macadamia between stumped coffee plants, and then a macadamia plant that was planted in the place of a coffee plant that was removed, right? Exactly. Perfect. Okay, so what were your results then? The main result was that, yes, it's possible you plant a macadamia orchard uh, intercropped with an old cough plantation. But it's necessary you stamp the two closest cough plants will plant macadamia seedling. Or you remove a cough plant to plant a macadamia seedling in its place, okay? Because if you don't uh, prune or remove any cough plant, the cough plants will uh, limit the macadamia seedling growth, okay? And yes, it's interesting you plant macadamia intercrop with a uh, old uh, and even inefficient cough plantation because it, the cough production can reduce the cost of macadamia implantation. So the farm keep uh, his income with cough production even that this production is small in the period in what he will not have macadamia production okay so he can continue harvesting coffee in the same area okay yeah yeah, that makes sense to me. I would like to ask you, if I can, about your other project uh, you mentioned earlier about starting macadamia and coffee uh, intercropping right from when the right from the get go when you first plant them. Can you tell me more about that and how it compares to? intercropping when the coffee is already established? Yes. Uh, when, you, when you start the coffee, macadam intercrop system, planting two, two crops together at the same time, we have advantage too because, it, for example, when you plant a single macadamia plantation, the beginning of the, the growth of the crop is really low in the, because you plant like uh, just one plant, one macadamia plant, it's 15, 50 square meter, okay? So you uh, keep a, a big empty area during the, 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 the beginning. Uh, in this case, you can grow coffee uh, together uh, in this period uh, where the, the macadamia uh, uh, plantation don't produce nuts and the, the empty area is, is, is big, okay? Coffee plantation start to, to produce uh, or start producing before uh, macadamia and uh, two or three years after uh, planting cough plantation already start to produce and macadamia start to produce uh, about uh, five or six year uh, after planting okay another interesting thing is that uh, as I said before coffee grows well with some shade okay and when you plant macadamia together uh, two or three years after macadamia trees can make some uh, shed to cough plants and macadamia trees has 
after three or four or five years, macadamia trees are taller than cough trees. And the macadamia trees can uh, decrease the windy effect in cough plants. Okay? So, all of these uh, benefits, all of these effects help uh, cough uh, produce more, especially when you have some uh, climate problem. For example, uh, wind, is frost, high temperatures that uh, damage cough plants, okay? So, you can keep a higher cough production intercrop. But to this, you need to plan really well the intercropping arrangement. Because if you put the uh, uh, many macadamia plants in a hectare, you uh, some years uh, after you will have a denser a dense shed, okay? And this dense, this strong shed can decrease cough production, okay? So cough plants like shade, but not a really strong shade, okay? A really uh, dark shade. The cough plants like just a little shade, like 30% uh, or 20% of shade, okay? So you need to plan really well the intercropping, especially when are uh, putting the two crops, you, uh, when you are planting two crops together at the same time. You need to think, you would like to keep the intercropping during 10 or 20 years. You would like to keep the intercrop just in the beginning to, to use better the, the area, cro uh, uh, cultivating coffee before macadamia growth bec become taller. Uh, or you would like to plant uh, the intercropping system and after some uh, seven or eight years you remove the cough and keep just the macadamia orchard. It is, is important you have uh, this idea to plant because if you would like to keep the intercropping system you need to plant uh, a less dense macadamia plantation into the cough plantation. If you would like to remove cough plantation after some years, you can put more macadamia plants in, in uh, per hectare, okay? Okay. So coffee plants like some shade from the macadamia trees, but from this current project, you found maybe it's not really the other way around where macadamia is not a big fan of the shade from the coffee trees? Exactly. Okay. The, the, okay. the, the, the shade of coffee trees in the macadamia seedlings in the beginning uh, 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 decreased the macadamia seedling growth, okay? Okay. All right. All right. So... I think that covers kind of those two projects pretty well, but obviously trees take a long time to grow. There's plenty more to learn about them. So what does your future research look like? Where are you going? What questions do you still have? We already uh, studied cough macadamia intercropping since the beginning or uh, introducing macadamia uh, seedlings in uh, old cough crops. 
we have made um, uh, a lot of uh, biometrical uh, measurements and eco uh, economical measurements, but uh, we didn't make any measurements uh, about our own soil fertility, soil my, uh, cr microbes, and carbon sequestration. This is an interesting uh, thing because when you grow cough and macadamia in an intercropping system, uh, the, the biomass in the area is much bigger and probably uh, carbon sequestration in this situation, uh, especially if you imagine the root system of these crops, especially uh, the macadamia root system, the carbon sequestration can be very uh, big. Uh, so uh, we we have interest to uh, measure these the things in, in in these systems. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. I have three questions left for you. First question is if people want to learn more about what we have talked about today, where can they go for more information? We have a lot of information about coffee here in Brazil, but uh, most of them are in Portuguese, unfortunately. Uh, uh, in, in Hawaii, they grow coffee and macadamia, and they grow coffee and macadamia intercrop too. So maybe in some uh, websites from uh, Hawaii uh, University or other agencies, you can uh, find something about. We have published something about our works in English too. Uh, in some congress, uh, there are some uh, works, papers, and discussion about this theme, but it is not a it's not a issue, a subject that you can find a lot of information. Okay, uh, the, the information about cough macadamia intercropping is uh, scarce yet. Okay, but the, in internet you can find some some. Uh, report some uh, manuscript some uh, papers sure yeah we will include links to your papers in the show notes of course so that might be a good starting point for people and we'll uh, include links from there second question is if people want to get involved either with this research or intercropping these crops themselves what can they do to get involved i didn't say before uh, but macadamia is a, a plant originated in australia so australia uh, has a big uh, production of macadamia and uh, has a uh, many research programs on macadamia specifically, not about intercrop, uh, macadamia cough intercropping. Uh, as I said, in Hawaii, uh, macadamia is an important crop and cough too, and they cultivate the macadamia and the cough intercrop, especially using macadamia as other trees to shade uh, cough plantations. Um, in these uh, countries, you can find some tips about the these two crops, especially in Hawaii, about two crops. About coffee, Brazilian is an uh, important reference in the world, but other countries like uh, Colombia, uh, Mexico, Costa Rica, uh, 
Vietnam and the other some countries in Africa and Asia uh, produce information uh, about cough uh, cultivation. For who would like to be involved in this uh, subject, it's important try to find information about these buff crops uh, and uh, specifically about the intercropping is important to search information about uh, about the behavior of these crops when cultivated when planted together because the behavior or the performance of these crops uh, when planted together intercropped is different from the single crop, coffee or a single macadamia uh, plantation, okay? Another interesting thing is that uh, normally when in, in many places uh, farmers use trees into cough plantation just to make shed to cough plants. But these trees, these shady trees, don't generate income to the farm. When you use a tree like a macadam that produces a really expensive uh, nut, the farm can have another source of income in the same area and if the farm arrange the intercropping system well this farm can keep both crops in the same area having uh, both income sources uh, each crop is harvested in a different time of the year and, uh, and is really interesting because the work in, in this system is uh, balanced during the year, is distributed during the year uh, and, the, and the income in this system uh, is really interesting but it needs to be really or very very well planted and arranged in the area in the area okay sure yeah that is great advice final question what is one fun fact that listeners would not know about you if all they had was your research <laughs> a fun fact I, uh, it's important to, they know that I don't uh, I don't work just with coffee or macadamia or intercropping system. I work with another crops too. I research uh, potato. I research uh, beans and other crops. I I live I I lived a, a time in in Madison, Wisconsin, where I. Uh, I was a uh, uh, visiting uh, scientist in soil science department of uh, University of Wisconsin. Uh, I I love my my profession. I love my research. Uh, work with farms is really really nice. I don't know if he everywhere, but uh, here in Brazil, farmers demand a lot of information, uh, especially uh, in, in subjects like uh, coffee inter, uh, macadamia intercrop because uh, the, the, the information about this is scarce, okay? Wonderful. Those are some great fun facts. Thank you so much for your time and being on the show today. We really appreciate it. Thanks for all you do. Thank you, Ed. Thank 
you for listening to Field Lab Earth. You'll find links to today's resources in our show notes or on our website. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations for show topics, please contact us at podcast at sciencesocieties.org or on Twitter at Field Lab Earth. If you'd like to hear more content like this, please subscribe and don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, Stitcher, or anywhere else you find your podcasts if you like our show. This podcast is a joint production of the American Society of Agronomy, Crop Science Society of America, and Soil Science Society of America. Special thanks to Lobo Loco for the use of their song Spook Castle on the intro and outro of our show. Opinions and conclusions expressed by guests are their own and are not considered as those of the American Society of Agronomy, Crop Science Society of America, Soil Science Society of America, its staff, its members, or its advertisers. Thank you.